Hello, everybody. So I'm Lou Bloomfield, and this is how things work, the Physics 1060. So it's the spring version of this course. Some of you took this, the fall version. They start out the same, and then they head off into different territories. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'll, I'll start off just introducing the course, uh, the, the, the reasons behind the course, and what I sort of expect or, or general issues about the course. And then we'll start doing the course, and you'll see that, the, that what, what's, you know, what's the course about? It's, it's looking at the, at the real world, in principle, things that you're familiar with, and finding science in general, physics in particular, in those, uh, in those objects or situations. And my, my first object for a very long time has been skating, so we'll do skating uh, later today. But, but I'll start off with, with just a sort of background on the course. And to begin with, you know, what's physics? Uh, it's a piece, it's a, it's, it's a, a su subset of, of science. It's, it's the science of the physical world. So we're really looking at, at what makes things work the way they do. Uh, I think physicists see, see it as sort of the, ba the most basic of the sciences, uh, mathematics being the only thing that's, that's sort of more uh, fundamental than physics. And on, on physics, then, uh, as you zoom out, you sort of see things like chemistry and the various life sciences and so on. So it's the story of the physical world, and, and its goal is to explain the phys physical world so that you look, look at it, uh, observe it, try to model it, figure out how, how to think about the way things actually do work as you, pr as you view them, and then ideally predict in the, uh, future things based on your experiences with the old things. So that's sort of the, the scientist way of looking at it. Uh, more more uh, familiar way of looking at it is it's really, it really addresses a lot of how and why questions. So the what, where, when stuff, that's typically not physics, but the how and why is often physics. And so we'll look at a lot of how and why questions. Um, at least uh, to my, my sense, it's a, it's a key component of science liter uh, literacy. So um, that's, why, you know, that's why I'm teaching it. I can say more about that in a second. But, uh, it's part of modern life, so, so physics is just in so many of the things that you do or own or, or interact with. Uh, it's there. They're not magic. They're, there's a reason why this does that and that does this. Uh, and hopefully I'll convey some of that understanding to you. Um, the other thing is that physics really addresses, to some extent it's responsible for, but it also addresses uh, many of the problems of modern life, and some of them quite serious. And toward that end, I, you know, last time I did this course, I went on a long soapbox at this point. I, you'll see as time goes on, I do my public service announcements where I try to point out to you why something I'm about to tell you or something I just told you is truly interesting in your real life. And then I also do my soapboxes where I rant and rave about things. Um, the one I want to rant and rave with just a little bit at the moment is that we seem to be at, at present in this sort of post-everything society. It's post-ethics, post-integrity, post-truth, post-community. Um, that's a little bit of an overstatement, but not a whole lot, which is kind of grim. Um, and you know, with this is to some extent we're post-education. It's kind of like a lot of you well, some of you, I hope. Some of you will end up in jobs that require a college degree, but not a college education. If that distinction doesn't make sense to you, think about it a little bit. Um, it influences this class in various ways. Uh, but science is one of these things that's sort of being kicked around in various ways. Science isn't perfect. It's got all sorts of issues with it, like the, 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 the human issues. Uh, for some people, science is just simply an income or a way of getting ahead. Uh, and it's got imperfections. It's got people who are sort of wasting their time doing stuff. It just doesn't matter. But there is a significant amount of science that does matter to the real world, that, that contributes, hopefully mostly positively, to the real world. And understanding some of that stuff will make you among other things, it will give you tools for living. Uh, if you have no idea what goes on when you turn on the oven or when you run the air conditioner or when you 
run the computer, if you've got no idea how this, this is all happening, uh, you're in part at the mercy of people who do understand it or claim to understand it. So it, it's, a, it's a free for all out there and, and having some insight will hopefully be valuable to you. Um, so the reason I teach this class is because I like you guys and I like society, I care about you. Uh, and, and I want things to head up, and, you know, to, to, to be, to people to prosper. So hopefully you'll pick up some of this stuff, find it actually useful. This is not intended to be just an academic exercise where we suffer through a whole bunch of equations and at the end you come out and just, you know, May, I think it's, is it May 7th? You, know, you walk out of the final exam, wow, I can forget it all, you know, great. You know, what's the point of that? Uh, hopefully you'll actually remember some of this stuff and find it useful. Um, I'll stop my, my rant, rave, or soapbox. Uh, the class itself, so I created this class 1991, it's been a while. Um, it's evolved in various ways, and it's, sort of, it's, it's pretty much settled down at this point. But I created it with the intention of making it useful, and so I decided, you know, what would be valuable to people who are not going to go off into the sciences. And really, it's, it's the objects and the, the ability to sort of deal with them, the real world. So, so it's about objects. And it's essentially case study physics. We'll look at the objects. We'll dig into them to find physics. But most of the story is about the objects, although when, it, when, when the time comes for an exam or a problem set, I may well ask you about a different object that has the same issues in it. Same physics concepts living in it. But it's about real stuff, hopefully real stuff, um, as we'll see. Uh, it eventually, you know, we, we occasionally get into formulas, and some of you have taken physics before or, or thought about taking it before or avoided taking it before, have, have noticed all this formula focus of, of traditional physics courses. And really, the physics is in the concepts, to, to my mind, and the formula is simply uh, uh, give a, a, a quantitative aspect and a, and, a, and a detailed predictability to the concepts. But if you, if you work with the formulas without understanding the concepts, that is pointless. I could just come up with a, with a, a version of physics class, you know, Game of Thrones physics, where everything's wrong, you know, all the formulas are just messed up. And we could all calculate through and everything would be great, except you would know nothing useful. Um, so, uh, Formulas are a minor player in this, in, in the play that is this class. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, you know, I was going to call it a backwards physics course. So it's, it, 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 it turns things around relative to normal classes. Uh, the last thing that we'll deal with, if, if at all, is formulas. Uh, traditional classes often, the last thing they deal with is examples or applications, if, if at all. So here we go, applications first. Uh, again, how and why questions. A lot of how and why questions we'll work with. And uh, in reality, it's how physics was discovered. That is, nobody went and just said, today I want to come up with a physics concept. They wanted, instead, they wanted to answer some question. Why did this happen? And they dug and dug and dug and thought and dug and thought and modeled and, th and eventually came up with, a, with the concept. So uh, how it is that, that in teaching about science, scientists often just throw out the whole scientific process by which they came up with all the, the information and just uh, report it almost like they're reading an encyclopedia. It, that's just not right, okay? So we'll try not to. Uh, some goals and expectations for the class. I hope that you'll develop your understanding and intuition, meaning that, that both that you will uh, start to see how things actually do work in, uh, and you'll have some sense when you see things that you don't necessarily understand yet, you, you, you have some ways of, of, of dealing even with that, uh, anticipating how things might work. Or, uh, um, okay. I uh, appreciate the role of physics in the world. It's not just an academic exercise. When you leave the room, it's just gone. It's actually real. So if we talk about how skating works, and you go skating, you're going to see what we talked about, it's going to happen, okay? Uh, the universe in general. The universe is predictable, not magical. 
Uh, there is a lot of non or anti-science going on right now, and it's on all, you know, all fronts where people just toss out science as, as uh, the, you know, the, the results aren't in, or they don't know what they're talking about, or they're just, just uh, they're bought off, those scientists. They're just doing it because, because they can make money at it. Uh, or, you know, it, I, I could list them, but that would be politically incorrect, the various issues that people go after, uh, knocking off science. Uh, so, but there are lots of people who don't know science that have big opinions about things that really have scientific answers. So, uh, I hope you'll learn to enjoy science and not fear it. Uh, I, I talked recently with a bunch of fourth graders working on science, and you know they're, they're all eager and uh, addressing sort of some, some pretty interesting, sophisticated issues at fourth grade, but there's sort of this gap between maybe fourth grade-ish and now, you know, college, where, where not, not much progress is made towards science in understanding, but a lot of fear of science develops. Something's, something's strange in how, we, how, how, how society brings you all up. Anyway, I hope you come out of this feeling like, yeah, science is doable. Um, it may not be your taste, but you can understand considerable amounts of it. And to an extent, if, if I don't convey it to you and you can't understand it, it's not because, oh, it's too hard. I can never explain my research, for example. No, it's that I can't, exp I, I'm just not a good explainer. So I will have failed if I don't get this stuff across. So hopefully I can get across much or most of, of what I intend, and you can understand it. Uh, and even find it interesting and enjoyed, enjoyable. Uh, I expect you to think rather than memorize. And as time's gone by and I talk to more, more and more students, um, I'm well into the 10,000 student range. Um, one of the things that I end up teaching has nothing to do with science. It has to do with, with real thinking, uh, as opposed to, for example, memorizing. I, I will expect you to really think. And with no disrespect, I say, I, I, I say a lot, for a lot of people, it's, a, it's got a lot of new experience to it that really thinking about a problem, following it logically, trying to address, a, in effect, a story problem, really, what's, what's the issue here? All of that is hard work and not, not asked of you often or often enough. And so uh, hopefully you'll come out of here, even if you learn zero science, that you learn how to think better. Then I will have, have made some, you know, we will have made a, some progress. What else? Um, focus on the concepts, not the formulas. You will see occasionally a formula comes up, and there are a few that I care about, very few. The other ones, I look up myself. Um, memorizing formulas is, if I, the issue is I know, I know there is a formula like this, and the details of this, I could probably figure out if I wanted to, but hey, I can just look it up. So, so we can do better. Let's focus on the concepts, try to really understand them, the formulas then follow. If, if you ever want them at all. Um, and learn to apply concepts. Hopefully you'll come out of here and you'll see things that you'll go, I know why that happens. Um, it's, that's a goal here. Um, what else here? I assume no prior study of physics. Uh, I'll ask you in a second a question about how many people have taken physics, but, the, but we'll get there. Um, so, uh, so I start from, the, from square zero. Um, Former physics 1050 students, so people who've taken the other semester, we start, these semesters start the same, and I, 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 I claim it's a two-week review, but it's probably a little longer than two weeks. Anyway, uh, in my experience, very few people have suffered from having to go through it twice. Uh, the, first, the first two weeks, and a little more maybe, are just sort of laying the, the, the groundwork for physics, and, and part, in part building language, so we have something that we can talk with about um, we can use to, to converse properly. Uh, after that, they diverge. This, this semester is more about things electric and magnetic and, and light and so on. All right, so I'll ask a question. I used to use clickers. Uh, I stopped doing that a couple years ago. You know what clickers are, these, these student response station things. The problem I was experiencing with that, to my, to my surprise, was I was dragging people here against their will to be at class so they could click and in principle get a little morsel of credit. And one day I put a GoPro camera 
in one of those windows there in the back, filming you all from the back. And it was pretty impressive. Uh, what was going on in all the computer screens and stuff? You know, the various movies being watched, the guy who, who wasn't even watching the movie he was watching because he was on his phone, and he was, listen, he, was, he was multitasking. And I wasn't part of the multitask. Okay, so I, eventually I just, the clickers, they're, they're, they're great in concept, but I don't want to drag you all here. If, you don't, if, if it's not valuable to be in class, somewhere in this, we've got something wrong. So anyway, I do, so I do, I, I'm back to, to Victorian era. It's, it's, a, a funny thing is that, well, for me, it's funny. Um, most things are funny for me. Uh, I'm teaching, I can teach about real high tech. You know, we can go as far as you like. Uh, on the other hand, I'm perfectly happy lecturing in an environment where all I got is a blackboard. I don't care. You know, technology, teaching technology, pff, uh, the, the old fashioned way. Um, I mean, I, I probably like stones and wax pencils or something. That's a little too extreme, but, but uh, we don't need high tech. So I can ask questions with just hand votes. And you should, okay, among many things to, to, to convey to you is, I would hope this class eventually becomes a conversation, not just me pontificating up here and you all sitting back there as a, as a what I consider to be sort of a plastic audience. You know, um, if you don't ask questions or, or, or speak up about things that you are interested in or aware of, then what's the point of having me live? I can just be played back. Um, I, can, that, I could do a long soapbox about that one too. I'll, I, I'll leave it. So, so do ask questions, participate, play with the demonstrations I've got up here. I'll, I'll tell you or warn you if they're dangerous. There are some high voltage things where, uh, that you know you do not actually want to touch that. Um, so, uh, but otherwise, it's all open season. Um, and I'll, and I'll, yeah, I've got more to go there. But so, first off, is just a question about the background in physics. And this is in part to inform you all about yourselves. And so what is your background in physics? And I've given five choices, and I didn't change the last one since last time, but the last one's usually something like, like you know, I taught Feynman or Einstein, everything he knows, um, or knew. Uh, so, so, so choices. A is that you've never taken any physics before. How many, how many fit in that category? OK, so maybe 20, 30, 30. Uh, some, but I've never taken a physics class. Okay, so this is a sort of awkward in-between question. It's you know, a dozen people in this. Um, how about I've taken up to a year of physics? Okay, this is the majority, and oh, we're pushing uh, 80, 100, something like that. I've taken two years of physics. So there are some of you, you know, a dozen about there, too. And okay, you're an alien scientist. How many of those? It, it, that's more, that was more fun back in the days. I would ask that kind of a question uh, with the clickers, because then people were sort of anonymous, and, and no one would look at them when they push in, yes, I'm, I'm an alien scientist. Um, OK. Or we get things like I would, have four, I would have four answers, and people would be there clicking on E. Yeah. There are lots of games we could play. All right. Um, a second question like this. So, so the, the takeaway from that is, on average, you all have one year of physics, and that might intimidate those of you who have not had it that much. But the, the observation will be, it doesn't matter. Because a lot of you who've taken one year of physics, sad but true, didn't learn very much from it. You'll, I mean, you know if you did or didn't, sort of. Uh, there is the issue of knowing what you do not know is a, it, learn it. it. Learn to know what you do not know is an incredibly useful or an important uh, thing to, to, to have learned. You will meet many people who do not know what they do not know, and, in, and you can see it. It becomes an issue. Okay, um, how about, can you distinguish the following physical quantities? So these are, these are measurable things in physics uh, with names, and, and, and can, you, can, can you distinguish them if you saw them? Uh, how many think they could disting you know, distinguish velocity from acceleration, mass, from weight, and force from momentum. You okay with the question? How many think that they have you know, got no idea what, what, those, what those things are, basically, distinction-wise? Okay, so a dozen, maybe. 
Um, how about I have a faint sense of their differences? Maybe two dozen. Uh, how about I might be able to distinguish each pair? You know, we're now we're at uh, maybe 30 or so. Uh, I can probably distinguish each pair. Okay, now we're at uh, 50, probably. Um, and I can definitely distinguish each pair. Back to a dozen. Okay, so, so it's somewhere in the mix. It's, it, they're, 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 you, got, you got many of you uh, pretty decent feeling, feeling like you can, you can, you can pull them apart. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. I mean, we, we will deal with these guys, those, those three, in the next two-ish weeks, for sure. All right, so th some things to do. Uh, please read the syllabus. Um, I put a paper mini version of it out. You can pick up after class if you didn't already get it. It evolves with time because I am not one of these people who can predict that on uh, you know, April 3rd I'm going to be exactly there. Uh, I kind of view this class, you know, I was thinking about it before class, it's kind of like a play that is only partially scripted. And the rest, I, we, we, we write it on the fly. We just do it, okay? And you all can play with it, too. So if you, if you ask me about something, if we, if we hit, hit something and it brings to mind something that is of, of general interest um, and, and sort of relevant, I'm perfectly happy to talk about how almost anything works. Um, I put that on a website, very long story, but that kind of question. And a remarkable number of, of people asking questions in from the outside world had to ask me about uh, how their boyfriend and girlfriend relationship issues work. It's like, come on. Okay, but, but uh, you know, things of general interest and involving sort of vaguely science, we can do them in any of them. Um, yeah, those questions on the website. It's like, it's all ha, ha, ha. I'm so clever, I invented this question you've never seen before for the 10,000th time. All right. Um, so do read the syllabus, get, a, get an idea. It's going to evolve in time, as I, as I started to say, but I got on a tangent, because we'll, it'll take more or less time for me to complete various topics, or we get onto other things that are, that are of interest. Um, the, there are problem sets listed there on the syllabus, and those are likely to stick by time, and you're going to be responsible for, for keeping up with the problem sets. And so the, on occasion, there will be some reason why we'll shift a problem set around, but, but mostly they're, they, they, they go more or less rhythmically on Wednesdays. The first one won't be due for a while, though. Um, watch the online video figures and stuff. This, in this semester in particular, some of the topics we'll talk about involve things you cannot see. You can't see electric charge or magnetic fields. And so, Visualizing them, many of you will identify yourselves as visual learners. You've got to see it to understand it, or, or you, do, you understand it better if you see it. Um, I can make, allow you to see it with video and animations and stuff. So some of the video figures there I work pretty hard on to try to get so you can see electric charge uh, and, and how it behaves. So I do encourage you to watch those, fi those figures. So the online book, uh, which is really the only thing that, you, that, I, that I ask that you really uh, purchase access to. It has, you know, instead of the plastic, or the plastic again, uh, static two-dimensional figures that are just sitting there. And in the online one, it's a video. You can play it. And, and things happen. Uh, physics is all about things happening. So, so photographs are, are, don't show you a lot of physics. They often miss things because there's no time. There's no time involved. All right, uh, there are a lot of online questions to, to, to practice with, to, to, to challenge yourself, to see what you understand or don't. Um, in general, learning physics takes uh, multiple passes. You often will not get it the first time, maybe not the second time, maybe the third time you're starting to get it, third, fourth time it's starting to settle. Circling around, back, through it over and over is finally the way most physicists learn physics. And I encourage you to, to, to do that, to, to, to read the book, to watch the video pieces, to come to class with some background already and build bit by bit on your understanding. And talk to one another. If you don't know anybody, meet people here. I mean, we, we can you know, talk to me about how to arrange for you all to meet one another and, and hear each other's voices explaining some of this material. Because 
my voice is, is the same in print as in, you know, on the book. In fact, as it is live, sometimes my same stupid jokes and all that kind of stuff. But if you hear somebody else say, say it, particularly somebody who is thinking hard and has just learned the concept you wish you could understand, they may remember how they learned it and help you uh, get, gain the understanding in a way I'll never, I'll never manage. All right? Um, I have office hours four hours a week, Monday afternoons in Alderman Library, in the cafe at the entrance to Alderman Library, and Wednesday mornings in my office downstairs, room 133, and come and talk to me about the, you know, pretty much anything, and, and including the, the problem sets, the, the exams, all that stuff, uh, because conver conversation is way more effective at, at learning this stuff than passively listening, uh, semi-passively reading, all these things. That's why, again, I, I harangue you all to, to ask questions in class and get things going. Um, passive learning sucks, but we can do better. Um, the overall problem, the, the coursework, it's 10 problem sets. I usually lose one somewhere along the line. We end up with nine, but we're, we're shooting for 10. When I say we, I lose nine, it's because we got out of sync, I have to delay a problem set, eh, something goes wrong, and eventually one gets killed off. But it's, the, the goal is 10. Uh, two midterm exams uh, and one final exam. And the final exam is just is a double length midterm. In effect, it's twice as many. Midterms are 30 questions, all, you know, virtually all conceptual. Uh, you can see all the old exams for a zillion, you know, for many, many semesters. Um, so they're, they're 30 conceptual questions. They are not easy. I make every question a challenge so we don't waste questions just having it. What color is George Washington's white horse? That kind of stuff. Um, and the final exam is twice as long. It, it's essentially the, the third midterm is half of it, and the other th half of the final exam is sort of an open season the whole semester. At this point, you know, having talked like this, any questions, things that are uh, barreled long, things that, please. Do you need the access code to watch the online videos? Yes, the, the, the online videos live within the, within the online version of the book. So you need that. Um, there's a two week grace period. You can, you can sign up, you can watch all the videos and then walk away. But, but uh, um, yeah, I would encourage you to get that. Some of the stuff may have drifted, some things may have drifted onto YouTube in bits and pieces, although it violates various copyright stuff. But um, the, the, the fourth graders I talked to recently had watched a whole bunch of videos of me and I, I did an online version of the beginning of this course on Coursera, which you're also welcome to go watch. Um, so you can see some of these early classes done by uh, the movie version as opposed to the play version. This is the play, right? Uh, it has the pluses and minuses of it being live and, and imperfect and evolving and play-like. And I figured if I'm gonna do an online version of, of this opening stuff, I don't just wanna film the play. You know, movies of a play, videos of a play, sometimes they're good, but, but by and large, it's, you're missing something. So if I'm gonna go leave the classroom, I'll do it right. So I made, I made the movie version uh, at considerable effort, but so you know, I, I run, I'm running around grounds, rolling up and down uh, ramps and things like that, throwing basketballs at the rotunda. That's on Coursera, so you can do that, or you know, it's free. Other questions? Okay, so my final thoughts before getting into skating. Ask questions and volunteer in class. You know, just be, be, in, be engaged if you can do that. It's, this is another drift in modern life, is y'all get so excited to go out, blast out of this room to get back, fear of missing out. F of M, I can't, FOMO, FOMO. You, you gotta get back to the, to the Instagram, all right? You, you, you can wait, they'll be there. And you know, try, relax, let it go, okay? So get involved in all this. You will see that I try to learn everybody's name or maybe even more than, you know, to get to know you at least to some extent. It's a little bit of, you know, I think it's important. It's also a little bit of an obsession. It'll, there'll be moments when, when I'll meet you on grounds this semester or three semesters from now. Um, and you, you have to put me out of my misery 
tell me your name, because I'll be like, oh, I can't do it. Um, but anyway, I, I, I do get to try to, like, to, to know a lot of you people. I'm not just here just because, you know, you know okay, we got uh, 20 minutes left, and then I can, like, pfft, all right? You, you all matter to me. Um, do the demonstrations after class. So, so if you see something that, 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 that interests you, come and work with it. Uh, I block out this room the hour before and the hour after class. So you can come in early, ask me questions, talk about stuff. Stick around late, ask me questions, talk about stuff, play with stuff. Um, I, mean, I have these, these thoughts like to require you all to get a toolbox. You know, I, how many of you have ever used you know, a screwdriver? Ooh, good. All right. I mean, I could go, we could try other ones, but you know, it's like I, I get worried that it's, it sounds like which, which end of the screwdriver do you hold? The metal part? Okay. Um, I grew up taking everything apart. It just, it, I couldn't help it. It was just in my nature. Um, what else? Last. Okay. The, the rear doors of, the, of this classroom exit onto the third floor. Coming and going there is, is easy. If you, if you go out the front, it's, I, I rarely noticed. I'm, I, so it's fine. I, but the back is probably the most straightforward way to come and go mid-class. Um, I get so wrapped up. It's like, anybody here, the, the, the other half of the building collapse? No. I mean, um, and finally, put away all electronics. I can't enforce this, and I, and I finally don't care all that much. If you ha use electronics, try to be disciplined about it and, and be involved in this class, uh, and don't distract the people around you or behind you. I mean, one of the things that I, that I saw both from the GoPro and looking, looking this way, and just my own experience looking that way, is screens tend to create a wedge of death behind them. So, so it's not only the person that's looking at the screen, but the people sitting next to them and then working their way back several rows are people that are sort of like mesmerized. Wow, somebody wore that outfit? You know, um, don't, don't wreck your, other, your, your, your fellow students' experience by distracting them to pieces. Okay? So that's my story here. Um, just seeing these, these guys here, I'll, I'll do one of my little shticks. You know, so a lot of science, science is either, can, can often be either really, really boring. It can be so abstract and academic that it, it's irrelevant. Or it can be just pure entertainment, like, ooh, so this is my, this is the shtick. It's like, whoa, this is science. I'm holding this little, this little, glass widget here, and the liquid is rising up, and I, I'm really hot stuff because I've driven the liquid all the way to the top. Like, ooh, that's science. You know, and you all been to, to science events that were like that. They were just gee whiz entertainment. I, I could do show of hands, but it doesn't. Wow, this is new science. Wow, now it's red. Okay. Um, this class We'll do demonstrations that, that superficially are like that, like things blow up, okay, wow. But if I haven't justified the demonstration, explained it to the point where it means something to you, and you come away understanding why I did what it did, then I've failed. I am not a magician doing fun and games. I'm an, I'm an anti, not anti, as though, though I have it. it's, not, it's not a judgment. It's, I'm, I do unmagic. I try to give away all the secrets. So the point of this class is to convey an understanding to you. It's not to gee whiz you. Okay? So if you don't understand what I just did, I mean, sometimes I get in a hurry where they're like, oh, there, are th there are three seconds left and everybody's standing up. I gotta do this demonstration. Um, but apart from those moments, uh, if, if something just made no sense, then I have failed. You know, call me on it. Let's, let's, let's get it straight. All right. That's enough of my introduction. Other questions? Right, you know. Yeah. How, how did I do this? These contain a liquid that is pretty volatile, like alcohol. 
and nothing else. There's no air in there. So when I'm down here warming this one, I am causing it to evaporate more. And when it does, it fills the little glass bubble here with more alcohol vapor than was there before, and the pressure builds up. And as the pressure builds up, and the pressure on the top hasn't built up, the liquid begins to be pushed towards the lower pressure, namely up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just evaporating. I'm, I'm forcing evaporation of the alcohol. Is that OK, everybody? So thanks for asking. You know? so, and and, and I, I do mean it when I say you're asking about, you know, I have my set agenda. But it doesn't have to be that way. One of the beauties of this class, from my perspective, is there is no curriculum in, um, imposed on it. We could talk about anything. So uh, and, 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 you know, I can be the judge of whether it's uh, suitable for the class or not, suitable uh, science. But, but so if you've got things that you wonder about that seem relevant enough to, to, to pull into the story, let's talk about them. So skating is my first topic, the one I've chosen. And it's useful because it's going to introduce a very familiar uh, concept you've, you've heard about your whole life, it, namely inertia. So that's where we're going to go. And skating, you know, skating specifically, OK, it's sort of skating specifically, but, but it's any of these sport or activities in which you do, spend a lot of time coasting, moving along steadily. And that includes bicycling, uh, roller, you know, roller skating for sure, skateboarding. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm out, but you can think of other ones. All right? So I'll start off with a question, and then we'll play the voting hands business. And this is, this question, uh, my style here is that to ask the question, we'll deal with it briefly here, and then we'll come back to it once I've covered the material that's really deals with it carefully. So a rotary lawnmower, and, and I hope all of you encountered or maybe used rotary lawnmowers. They are, they consist of an engine spinning a blade. So or, and I'll, the blade is, 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 is going around in a circle very, very fast, and it's sharp, and it cuts off the top of the grasses. I always get stuck on this because I want to talk about the blades of grass and I got the blades of the end. Ah, too many blades. Okay, so it's the grasses are sticking up and the blade comes and cuts them off, right? This is how a rotary lawnmower actually does work. The question is, would the blades still cut the grasses if they were not rooted in the ground? So they were just sitting there vertically poking up. Maybe they're, they're carefully balanced on their ends. Okay, they're, stick, they're just balanced up there. Can the lawnmower still cut them? You okay with the question? How many think that yes, it can still cut them? How many think no, it can't cut them anymore? Okay, so the vast majority are going for no, can't cut them. If you remember that, we'll come back. Okay? So some observations about skating. And instead of skating, because it's going to be a nightmare to try to get skates on and off my shoes, I go with a Razor scooter. Um, life on a Razor scooter or skate is when you're, on, when you're at rest on a level surface, the level surface gets gravity out of the story, so it makes life simple. Uh, when you're at rest on a level surface, you tend to stay le uh, at rest. That is, you, you would be very shocked to see me te teetering here momentarily on, on a balanced razor scooter, and suddenly, phew, I'm heading off at 60 miles an hour to the right. It has never happened. Um, if nobody pushes on me, I stay at rest, right? It's a familiar observation. If somebody does push on me, if somebody comes up, I cannot push myself. It's for, for complicated reasons, really. So, I, so instead, I'll have the table push me. The table's going to push me forward. Whoa, now, now with the push, I was able to, to stop being at rest. I started moving. So these are observations. Uh, with, with multiple people, we could do that right. Uh, on the other hand, if you are moving already in a level surface, so let me get started. So the story hasn't started yet. And this often happens with demonstrations. I have to say, like, don't, don't watch yet. I'm setting things up. Okay. Now, I tend to move at a steady pace in a straight line until I run out of room. And if nothing pushes on you, you go straight and steady. Also familiar observation. 
And if something does push on you well, then now things change. You could speed up, slow down, or even change which way you're heading. Any questions about those observations? They, 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 hopefully they're pretty familiar. Okay, so with that then we can start addressing you know, how and why questions. So, so you'll see as I do these various objects, I, I go through a series of how and why questions. So that's, that's at least the plan. If we actually do it, who knows. So the first one is, why does a motionless skater tend to remain motionless? So we made the observation that, th that this is the case. Uh, physics is all about observation and explanation. So, so if it's not observed, uh, there is some physics in which people talk about stuff that is either not observed or is even different from observed. But that's a, we're not going to go to that part of physics. All right, so why does a motionless skater tend to remain motionless? And the, 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 sh the very short answer is because. Uh, the slightly longer answer is that a body at rest tends to remain at rest. This is an observed behavior of our universe. That if you leave a skater alone and they're at rest, they're going to stay at rest. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, do people literally study that? Let's, watch, let's go watch a whole bunch of skaters. Well, no, but there are thousands, millions, trillions of observations of this in our universe. The things that are left alone and that are at rest stay that way. It's given a name, that observation. So it's, it, it's called inertia. It's, it's actually, uh, we'll see, it's a half of inertia. It's a piece of inertia. It's, so it's, it's observed in our universe that things that are left to themselves and that there are at rest stay that way. And that observation is, it, we say that they're exhibiting inertia, this, this behavior. Is that okay? Let me show you inertia. Then we've got a bunch of ways to show you. By long tradition, my first demonstration each semester, show you the inertia of place settings. So we got dish, silverware, for extra degree of difficulty, phony wine, and again, no magic. This is this is unmagic. The point of this is we're going to do a trick pulling the tablecloth out from underneath the dishes. It is not a trick. It's just a result, a consequence of physics. And the physics is that these things are objects at rest. That they will tend to stay at rest if you don't bug them. That is their nature. And I'm going to do as little bugging as I can possibly do. I have a slick tablecloth that's very limp that I'm going to pull out fast. It will bother them a little bit. There's a little bit of friction, which is in our future. Uh, and that friction could could cause trouble if I go slowly. I'm going to go so, well, in principle, so quickly that it will have almost no effect on their, on their behavior. They're essentially objects at rest, staying at rest. That's as simple as it is. Any questions about it before I do it? For once, I won't talk it to death. Ready? Get set. Ta-da! <laughs> And this is one, come up and try it after class. Don't be sheepish. Um, you, you can do it without the glass. Of, you know, it's disappearing ink, actually, for good reason, because occasionally it ends up on me or other people. Uh, not other people, me, OK. And it didn't, then just goes away. Uh, this plate un, is truly unbreakable. Well, you know, n no one has broken it yet. Um, there were years and years ago, I made, made the same claim about a different, a different plate. It was more a ceramic plate, and it did break. But this one, so, so, so words to watch. You can try this in, in, the, in, the, the, in your own home where no one's watching. You can just put a sheet of paper under a book. Just yank it out. Go fast. The book, being inertial, will tend to stay doing what it was doing, and it, it won't move. Okay? In this case, you, you, you want to, you know, I won't set it all up, you want to grab the, the tablecloth a little bit away from the table, because you want to you grab it out here, go in close, so, so you've got some, some room to move to get started, to get up to high speed, and then snap it tight. Don't pull up. Pull a little down, for obvious reasons. It's OK? So try it. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. The point is, you are just seeing inertia in, in action, or in inaction. It was, it, stuff was, didn't move, because that's its nature. Uh, another 
example of inertia in, a, uh, you know, in, a, in action, bad, bad, an apple. Uh, if I have this apple just sitting here minding its own business, it tends to remain sitting there minding its own business. And I can do things like I can sneak a, a, a knife through it. And historically, I would do it with actually this same knife, and I would do it like this, and I would even do it up here like this, and the whole front row is like, oh! Okay, so I, went, I, I moved back, and beyond that even, I went spring-loaded. So I now have a knife on a spring, you know. <laughs> right? So watch what, so the point is, you know, physics in action. This apple is sitting here minding its own business. Da, 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 da. Nothing's pushing on it, and so its nature is to keep it there. And the knife is going to sneak through it with almost no influence. Ready? Get set. Okay. So it was the apple's fault. The apple just didn't move out of the way. <laughs> and the knife cut through it. So that's just, again, inertia in action. Uh, questions? Thoughts? Okay. Um, there is a second half to inertia, and that, that comes in response to the question of why does a moving skater tend to keep moving? And the answer here is, again, because it's observed in our universe that an object in motion tends to continue in motion. In fact, in a straight line at a steady pace, uh, as we'll see shortly. And this is also inertia. This is the second piece of inertia. Uh, it's just observed that things that are moving tend to keep moving unless you push on them. They don't move because you're pushing on them. They move because you're not stopping them. They, already, they, they have history. They keep it up. They keep doing it. And demonstrations of this are things like, well, I can lead into it. I can, for, for, uh, you know, here's a banana again. I can, do, I can do inertia of an object at rest first. I'm going to run out of time. I've got to be a little careful here. But if I let go of this thing, it will not just sit there, an object at rest. Why? Because of gravity. I can't turn gravity off. So gravity is a nuisance. It's in our future, but I just want to make it unimportant. So I, how do I make gra gravity unimportant since I can't get rid of it? Work fast. Gravity takes time to cause trouble. So if I'm quick enough, I can show you inertia of an object at rest. Ready? Get set. Ha. OK. I'm a cavalier. Ha. All right. So, so uh, that's an object at rest again, approximately, getting sliced. Here's an object in motion getting sliced. If I get this thing started, and I'm going to get it started, that's before the story starts. So I'm going to get it moving. Then my hand is not going to be involved after that, for good reason. It's simply going to, this thing is simply going to be coasting towards the wall. And again, I'm going to go fast. If I go fast enough, gravity won't be a big problem. You know, fast enough is like that, OK? <laughs> yeah, OK. So, so I'm going to let the. I'm, I'll get it started. The story starts after it leaves my hand, when it's going fast and it's, it's moving because of inertia. The banana committed suicide. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. The banana simply kept going, and it encountered the knife. So, so an object in motion tends to continue in motion. All right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this, this question. Can an object, can it grasp? You know, hang on me for one minute. Can, can grass that's sitting there, standing up, not rooted in the ground, can the lo, ro, rotary lawnmower with its moving blade slice the grass? How many think yes? How many think no? Big change. Essentially 100% thought no before, and now they think yes. I don't have any grass, but I've got linguine. There are the grasses, minding their own business. Ready? Get set. No problem. Rotary lawnmower can cut the glass. All right. See you guys on Friday. Come up and try the tablecloth thing. <laughs>